You're listening to Journals of the Willing from the Tumbling Saber team, a part of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Check us out on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com, on Facebook, iTunes, and Twitter, and take your first step into a larger world. Everybody. Welcome back to Journals of the Willing. My name is Kyle. And I'm Steve. It's, uh, it's the weekend. You Ooh. made it through another week. And a, spe- a special shout out to our powerful friends who are getting this podcast early. I don't know how or how early, but you're getting it before everybody else. So hello, everybody, all the powerful friends out there, you beautiful people, you. How's it going? <laughs> you ready for the weekend? I am very ready. It's been a long week. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, I mean, even though we had Labor Day here, it's been a four-day work week, it still feels like it's been one of those uh, just slogs from hell. Oh, yeah, I mean, it does, having the Monday off, it just makes Tuesday feel like a Monday anyway, and it, it just still feels like a full week. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's face it, you're compressing five days of work into four days, it's, it's, it in some ways makes the time go faster, in other ways it makes you pull hair out faster. Yes, yes. Then again, we could just turn our thoughts to the people in Texas who are cleaning up after a disaster Mm -hmm. and to the people in Florida and go, you know what, here we are talking about Star Wars. It could be worse. It could be. All right, so how about some Star Wars talk? Actually, you know what, before Steve, I I haven't spoken to you in a while. How was your Force Friday? Did you do anything special or did you just blow the whole thing off? I kind of had to blow the whole thing off. Unfortunately, as a Star Wars fan, it hurt. But, um... Yeah, just wedding coming up. Couldn't really afford to bust out the wallet and get those figures. Um, well, I mean, your whole wedding registry, gift registry, is all Star Wars stuff anyway, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're registered at Toys R Us. We're registered <laughs> at there you Barnes go. Noble, all the Noble. You know, anywhere you can find a Star Wars toy. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, 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 I was in Target, I think, the Saturday or Sunday afterwards. And, uh, I mean, the, the aisle was completely cleaned out practically. I got to see some of the cool stuff there, um, but not, not too much. Clearly, you know, fans had gotten to it, which was exciting to see, you know. Um, I think if I'm getting any Star Wars figure, I'm still kind of focusing on the 40th anniversary still. Kind of that, that those figures, because I have Wave 1, so I'm kind of just focused on, like, the Wave 2 stuff when I can. Uh, I'm trying to keep keep it to one thing. What about you? Oh, well, mine was my experience was kind of a bust. Uh, not to belabor the point too much, because I, I went on and on last week on episode 92 or 91, whatever, wherever we're at, whatever our latest show was. Mm-hmm. Um, Walmart, it's, it's as if Force Friday wasn't even a thing. And I, I got over to Toys R Us just in time to make a couple key pickups. But... I thought in advance, I thought ahead, and at midnight the night before, just a bit after that, uh, I popped on over to Amazon.ca, made a few purchases, and that was really the key to my Force Friday. So, mm-hmm. And also, uh, Corey, good brother that he is, also uh, hit his local warmer, which was actually ready to go, and made a couple other key pickups. So I really, although the experience sucked, I got everything I wanted and then some. Nice. So what was so I know you probably talked about already the uh, the last episode of the main show, but what were some of the things that you got? I've got a Hera six inch. I've got all the three and three quarter that I wanted. Um, I got Jedi Master Luke and I got Jedi Training Ray six inch, mm. and I picked up uh, the Leia book. Nice. Princess of Alderaan, which which I guess is a, is a good place to start here since we're talking Star Wars literature. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I'm not too deep into this book at all. I'm, I think I'm only at chapter three. But this is this is Claudia Gray doing what Claudia Gray does, man. She's she's back in the saddle. And I, I, I think she gave us a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of how she works. Because I, I think, you know, as she tries to situate herself in this part of the galaxy in this time 
Like she was already making references to people in places that we met in Bloodline. Uh, maybe not the person, but uh, the the world of Biren. Biren? I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but it, mm-hmm. it was it had come up in, in chapter two. And I had to do a double take. Did, wait, was this spoken about in Bloodline? And I, I'm I'm pretty sure it was. Right, right, right. I was like, oh, this is maybe her way of of weaving her own narratives together and to keep her kind of locked into the galaxy far, far away. Right. I mean, you have have to think any storyteller needs to kind of have their own perception and take on the universe. So for her, she's kind of like, yeah, this is her niche. This is her kind of corner of the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's there's certain worlds and characters and connections that she, she will pull on. And lean on to build her stories, and she was right back at it, and it, it's, it was great. And you know, already, like I said, three chapters in, we've gotten references to Rogue One, uh, to the original trilogy, to the prequels. It's, it, it's pretty tight. I'm pretty pleased so far. Nice. Uh, but really, I, I can't go any deeper into that, and I, I don't want to get spoilery. Hmm. Not that I can really re- reveal too much at this point, but yeah, I, I expect that this book will be a hit. Yeah, kind of in the same uh, boat. Can't reveal too much because I haven't started a lot of, uh, or any of my books in the chopping block. But um, I think I'm going to actually, I was going to read Battlefront 2 first. But now that I got Phasma, I think I'm tempted to crack that open first and then get into uh, that. Oh, I'm totally blanking on it. Well, just Battlefront 2. I'm totally blanking on the Inferno, Inferno Squad. Yeah, Inferno yeah, Squad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're a big Phasma guy. Yeah, yeah. And like I've said before, I think I think it, it, it stems from Game of Thrones <laughs> and, and Gwendolyn Christie. <laughs> but I still think Phasma's cool. I love the design. I'm hoping, you know, because, you know, we, like we talked about, we feel like she was shortchanged, um, you yeah. know, with the Force yeah, absolutely. Awakens. So I'm hoping that we're getting some course correction here um, that... It was a purposeful, like a very, like a deep tease. Like, we're just going to give you a little bit <laughs> and then, um, you know, really flesh her out. So it's half hopeful, half loving Gwendolyn and Christie. So we'll see where it goes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So let's let's move on. Uh, we got a bunch of comics that we want to try and catch up on. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we will start with Star Wars 34 and we'll. Do I think thirty five as well, and then we'll move ahead. And I think as we go, we'll get progressively deeper into the issue. So, uh, issue thirty four uh, brought us back, brought Lando back to us, and paired him up with with Santa on Coruscant, which was a pretty interesting place. But th- I mean, this book was all about framing uh, Sana as is Santa or Sana. I don't want to say Sana. Whatever. I say Sana. Yeah. Yeah, just it, this just painted the picture of her being an, a, a brilliant scam artist. The way she hustled a bunch of pirates and the Empire, all while Lando sits back and goes, wow, like, you are a genius. He was blown away by this. Yeah. Um, I love their relationship in this issue. Just that their banter, although they were written, the dialogue was written really well between the two. Um, you know, I... I, I yeah, I, I did like a quick Instagram review of this one. And I was just kind of so just to kind of re- reiterate on that one is just I would love to see this pairing again. Um, and maybe like another one shot sometime in the future. The The chemistry that they had and the, the dynamic that they had really makes me want Sana to be in uh, the Han Solo movie. Yeah. I really want to see that. I really want to see that that. I mean, I, from Han and from Lando, she has a great time at dynamic with both, where she kind of can't stand either guy, but yet it it all works. It's all it all comes off as really funny. Hmm. Um. I I mean, I know there was no particular casting. I think for an actress that would look like her, if I remember, but hopefully they're kind of keeping it under wraps, and maybe they'll surprise us. Yeah, maybe I, at one point. Uh, there was an African American actress up for the up for a role, and everybody just immediately jumped on. Well, it's it, she's playing Sana. Like the the, the casting and that counts that casting bit plus the introduction of the character, it just naturally made made everybody go. Well, there you go. 
we're mm-hmm. getting her. But that all fell through, so. Or maybe it didn't. Maybe she got cast and we don't know about it. That would be nice to see her on screen. Right, right. Yeah, so that that's really issue 34. Just the way, the way essentially she took guns that she did, Imperial blasters that she didn't even have, like four or five crates of them that she claimed to have but didn't, and then sold them to pirates and then double-crossed the pirates to the Empire and then went around and tra- uh, sold them to somebody else. Like she's... She sold them, sold them like three times. Yeah. <laughs> and so like setting everybody up along the way. Like the pirates got popped by the Empire at one point. Because, because she, yeah, because she, Sana had sold the pirates out to the Empire saying, ah, well, you, you give me 20,000 credits, I'll tell you who stole your guns. Yeah, it was, it was really well done. I mean, this is, this is Jason Aaron nearing the end of the line, right? So he's kind of blowing out the tanks and, and, letting it all hang out now so good on him i'm i'm i was really happy with that one because I, I i've been souring on the main title i just feel like he's got not much left to say but this well, was now it's just yeah i mean now it's just kind of just been a string of one shots like he's just, yeah he's just having fun with these characters before he's done yeah yeah that's what i read like he was asked a question about um you know any more arcs that he wanted to do. And yeah, he said he he had more arcs, but he's not going to have the time to do them. So he's just condensing all the arcs that he had planned Mm -hmm. into one or two issues. And that's the end of the story. Okay. So that brings us to issue 35 where we see, well, everybody might have assumed was, was Jabba the Hutt, but is in fact, Gracchus the Hutt who we've seen all over this title. And I, and I think in Darth Vader. So he's no stranger. But, geez. I, I, I'm always freaked out when I look at this hut. It, remember that episode of The Simpsons where pudgy Homer was just lifting weights or doing barbell curls on one arm? And by the end, his arm was just one massive muscle? Right. <laughs> That's what I think when I see Gracchus. Like, to see his arms all ripped and a hut with abs... It's so bizarre. It's, it is so uh, weird. It's wrong. <laughs> anyway, so this, I mean, this was a fun book too. I mean, this, this one was, again, a, a step up. We got a lot of connections to the to the trilogy all over the place. We got Mon Mothma brought back. And I was actually really pleasantly surprised to see the name of General Draven brought in. Hmm. Remember, right. did, you've, have you read this issue? Yeah, trying to remember what. Um, trying to remember Draven though. Uh, you have to kind of drive my memory a little. So bit. he was in. Uh, he's he's the general in Rogue One. So sort of the person who gives Cassian Andor his orders to go, uh, go kill Gen- Generoso's dad. Mm, okay. Kind of no nonsense general. So we've been fans asked where's where is Draven during A New Hope? Where is he afterwards? Well, now we know this. Is, I think this was our first brush with him since Rogue One, so he's he's still around, which I was I was happy about. Right, right. So the job here for Han was to take Gracchus the Hut across the galaxy, smuggler style, and uh, I, I guess recover his weapons because apparently this guy has got a stash of weapons that the rebellion would would very much like to to take from Gracchus or buy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Over um, on Tef, right? Yeah, they, yeah. Well, of course, Gracchus was lying to them and said they were on. Geez, what what planet was? I forget now. But he lied, of course, and and they suspected all along that Gracchus would lie. So it was sort of an, an elaborate ruse that Gracchus walked right into. And so yeah, on Tef, we've heard that planet before too, right? I think in one of is it in Darth in the Darth Vader comic? Oh, I don't know. It, it was probably such a uh, like a, one of those quick references, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I know we've seen it before, but we also we, we also hear about Akiva, which was one of the main settings for Aftermath. Mm-hmm. And they, they talk about the catacombs on Akiva, which which you know is, is a direct tie into the Aftermath mo- novels. We we went down to the catacombs on Akiva, so. I, I don't I don't know why, but those types of uh, connections and, and dot connecting 
those always win with me. I love it when they do that. Yes. And we're seeing more and more of that as we go forward. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it 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 really can't be avoided. <laughs> it's just there's so much well, I guess uh, whatever. It just it makes me happy. I don't want to mm-hmm. overthink it. <laughs> uh but the last page the last page of this book really got me laughing because let's not forget like I, I one of the thoughts that went into my head as I started this book is it's been like seven issues so really seven months since we've seen anything from 3PO or R2 and right. I know Carlos listening going the better we don't have 3PO around the better <laughs> but come on like let's let's face it they're they're part of the family here it'd be nice to hear from them once in a while and the last we saw R2, he was taken off. He'd fooled Luke and taken off with one of his X-Wings in pursuit of 3PO, who had been uh, captured by Scar Squadron, I believe, mm-hmm. um, in in the last flight of the Harbinger or something like that. So now we have R2 on his own trying, trying to uh, capture or rescue 3PO. And the last page of this issue... We see a bunch of stormtroopers in a hangar on a Star Destroyer having trouble with a target. And there's dead stormtroopers all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get over how funny this is. Right, right. And they're, they're all talking about, oh, we have to we have to stop this guy. He's, Look at me, people he's taken down. And then the last panel is R2, like, scooting around on the floor, screaming. Like, Let's go kill that droid. <laughs> so the, the next issue is, is you know, they have that that big page preview page as the final page of the book and it's it's r2 just running amok on a star destroyer with with again down troopers everywhere which i can't wait to see yes um and and, and i like that it uh he's condensing arcs i don't know if he could have gotten a full arc with r2 on a star destroyer <laughs> if that's the case right yeah no that that's why i think one of the reasons why this issue was so successful is because I, th- I think he could have dragged this out into two issues if he really wanted to, but it's it's loaded with references and it's it's really dense as far as uh, that satisfaction of 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 getting these references. So right, I, right. It, it, yeah, I, I was su- I was really happy with this issue, but again, I need to I I have to stop and complain about the art. Yes, yes, we do. Ugh. Ugh. On Solo in particular. Brutal. Just brutal. Like, wh- Doesn't somebody have the job, I'm guessing it's an editor, to say, this art doesn't work, guys. There's, there's one panel in particular where it's sort of a, a, a split panel where it's a close-up of Han's face, Uncanny Valley style, and it, right next to it is, is Gracchus who's drawn comic book style in a perfectly acceptable, actually very good style. But it, it, the two together like that, it, ju- it doesn't work. It's, it's just bad. It's jarring. It's, uh, yeah, it doesn't... I, I mean, I don't know if people are not... If they're not getting this kind of feedback from readers. Um, I mean, by this point... It, it's a little too late. These have been drawn for quite a while, but um, just for future issues, you'd think. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Salvador Larocca just just he's got to stop doing this. He's a good artist. He can do his own Han Solo, or it's really the humans, right? Yeah, it's it's it, yeah. They don't do it with any um, of the alien species. It's just it's just the main cast. They try to make it look like the actors. And it's very bizarre. Ah, oh, it's 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 so bad. Like if everything was sort of like that, then I I guess you could let it slide. But seeing the styles, it ugh, the comic book style. Then right next to it is is the Uncanny Valley stuff. I, I'm gonna snap a picture, and I'll put that in the post for the show. And I defy anybody to tweet me, to at me in some way, and say no. Actually, that's really cool. I'm I'm thinking of that panel uh, where Han and Gracchus are, are are struggling, and Gracchus has Han by the throat, and it, it honestly looks like somebody cut out a picture of Harrison Ford 
and then pasted it on top of a drawing. Then they scanned the whole thing and printed it. Like, it's just terrible. <sighs> there's the one There's the one of uh, Han uh, kind of pointing the blaster in Gracchus' face. And he's kind of doing like a little bit of a grin. And it just looks kind of, it looks really creepy. To, to to put it bluntly, it's really creepy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, well, the whole thing, yeah, it was it was all really creepy. So I saw yeah. I I don't know exactly which panel it was, but yeah. And then there's there's one towards the end where Han's hair is sort of flopped down, like in a like like he was in a low flow shower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's another Seinfeld reference for those who care, but yeah, it, it's it's really bad. It's it's it takes me out of the moment because specifically because he he's pulling like often like stills from the movies and dropping them right into his comic, and so it takes me out of the comic and puts me into the like that movie. Right. I mean, I'd be curious to find out what the actual process is for this kind of artwork. Like, what are they actually doing? I mean, are they taking a photo? I mean, it honestly looks like they're either taking a photo, kind of throwing like a, an Instagram filter on it to make it look like it's a drawing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But somebody's got to make this stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I there's and there's the panel you were talking about. With oh, yeah. Han putting the blaster in the face. And, and, it, and he's making like a, a creepy grin. Yeah. And and that, it, and, uh. that's, I think that's a direct still from A New Hope when he's saying, uh, not this ship, sister. That's I think that's I think that's when he stole that. For, like he paused it at that part of the movie. You know, possibly if he, if he works by hand, I doubt it. But you know, he could have just taken a screen cap of that, put it in his drawing software and drew over top of it. Like, stop. Yeah. Anyway. Otherwise, a very good book, just marred with some really bizarre art choices. Right, right. But the story was good, though. The story was I, fantastic. It was yeah. a it was a really good romp. I I really enjoyed it. I'm I'm glad that he decided to condense this down. Mm-hmm. I, I would not like I would not have liked it half as much no, if they it extended works. it for twice as long. Yeah, no, it works as a solid one shot for sure. So where are we going next? We are, I'm going to do a little spoiler-free review for the first issue in the Captain Phasma series. Um, the miniseries Journey to the Force, uh, I was about to say The Force Awakens, Journey to uh, the Last Jedi. <laughs> um, yep, so I'm going to avoid spoilers. So I'll just say, overall, the artwork is phenomenal. Um, Chiquetto, I'm going to say, say, say it. Uh, oh. Phenomenal. Um, I'm thinking, there's one double, there's one big splash page. Um where so this t- so i mean not much of us but i think this was in the synopsis it takes place immediately after the force awakens so this issue explains how phasma survived the trash compactor and what actually went on and how phasma got off star killer base so that's what this arc is this i can't wait to see <laughs> um it is phenomenal it um but anyway the, the one splash page i was talking about just to highlight some of Chiquetto's work um, it shows the battle over Starkiller base and the work on the TIE fighters and the X-Wings. It's a big, so it's Poe Dameron kind of dead center and it's all the action happening behind him. It's beautiful. It's, I would have loved this framed. <laughs> um, but the, uh, what they did with Phasma was really cool. Um, just kind of just showing, I, I feel like it's some course correction here. You know, they, uh, a lot of the complaints were how, She was easily manipulated. Uh, She just kind of lowered the shields um, and sent to the trash compactor. So this is kind of her um, rectifying that. So you'll see. It's 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 pretty cool. Um, There's uh, some nice cameos as all this is happening throughout uh, the battle on Star Killer Base. So there's some cool little. peripherals you know throughout so as Phasma's as Phasma's leaving you kind of get to see some of our characters in the middle in the in the midst of Force Awakens action so that was really cool to see yeah I, I kind of like to I always like to see a different point of view on, on events that we already know yeah and this is exactly that which is which is what which is what made Lost Stars so interesting yeah 
So we get, you know, we get treated to Phasma's point of view. Um, Sorry, now who yeah. who wrote this? Uh, this was Thompson. Uh, oh, Kelly Thompson. Yeah. Kelly Thompson, artist Mark Giacchetto, colorist Andres Moza. Um, the cover was uh, Paul Renaud. Uh, cover was okay. Um, it's a little more, it's like a little just montage-y. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, cool. isn't, there's a falcon on the cover, but it has the round dish. Am I right about that? Um, actually, it's tilted. I don't even think I see a dish. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, it's it's tilted up, so you don't really see much of the top of it. Um, All right, I'll let it pass then. Yeah, I mean, it's Phasma dead center. You got Kylo and Rey in the corner fighting. You got Starkiller base in the back. Falcon on the left with some ties. It's cool. You know, it almost looks like a, like a Phasma solo movie poster. You know, I, I kind of get that vibe. But it's solid, you know. Now, from what my understanding is that this issue, this is the only issue that takes place um, in the current, air quote, current timeline. I think everything else now from issue two, three, and four kind of backs up a little bit. Am I, am I right about that? Um, no, actually. Um, so, from, well, I mean, so the preview that they give is just the cover. Um, from the cover that I see, it looks like it's going to pick up the story from where this issue left off. Gotcha. Because Phasma has, so it, so it ends with Phasma on a specific mission and the mission isn't resolved a hundred percent by the end of this issue. So I feel like, I I don't know, is it four issues, five issues, however long this miniseries is going to be, I imagine it's going to just continue from here. All right, cool. So this this one gets a thumbs up from you. Absolutely. So I I wonder if I think I'm sure pretty sure people listening have had their got their hands on this already. So let us know what you guys think. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, oh, I'm, I I'm a fence sitter when it comes to Phasma, but uh, I want to be convinced. Steam's doing a good job of convincing me. I want to hear from others. Let let us know what you think of these. Uh, it's so funny. I see that you sent me the cover. That is not the cover that I have. Ah, okay, so maybe they fix it. So they, the, the, fi- they totally fixed it. Yeah, because the, could... the preview cover did have the Falcon, in, and it did have the round dish on it, which, I, you know, uh, one of our powerful friends, Wesley, this is one of those things that would drive him cuckoo, too. That should have been a rectangular radar dish. But it's the preview cover art, so I'll let it slide. Serenity I'm, now. Yeah, I sent it your way, so you can see how it looks. It is the rectangular dish. Oh, it's oh well, wow! They okay. It's pretty much the same thing. They just they they just fix the Falcon's dish. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, good on them. Some editor there was was on the money. That's either Heather or uh, Jordan. Is that it? The editor, uh, CB editor in chief Axel. Oh Jordan yeah, Jordan. D White. Jordan D White. Yep, yep. Or yep, he- yep. let's. I'm going to give the, the credit to Heather. Oh, there's a She's good ship a, yeah, on Twitter, there? so. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> so, so there's Phasma down. Uh, last but not least, let's get to the main event here for the show. Yes. Oh, every time I read one of these issues, they have to kind of scrape me off the floor. It's been so good. Darth Vader. Volume 2, issue 5. This is mm. just phenomenal stuff right so this is the finale issue for the first arc the chosen one yeah so this if if there was any lingering doubts as to whether or not um master Uh. (laughs) chick-fil-a kirak kirak yeah (laughs) if there's any lingering doubts as to whether or not he's dead well he's dead he's gone it's over Mm -hmm. that city has been destroyed the vader destroyed the dam and just drowned the city and now he's he's back off to report to the emperor, and it's again we're we're seeing from from this is our fifth issue now in a row. I didn't think it would go this long, but here we are, five issues in of seeing a tattered, beaten, uh, humiliated uh, version of Vader that I I wasn't sure that we'd ever get to see. 
and they are um, really giving it to us in full. You know, this is, you know, I like that they're sticking with it and we're seeing this growth, you know, this beaten down Vader. I love it. Yeah, he's slowly, you know, he's he's on the verge of death a couple of times, but he always claws his way back out of it. He always seems to find a way. And it's, it's no different this time. So he, he, he reports back to the Emperor. And again, it's, it's seeing him in that shot. Where, you know, the robotic leg, you know, the, the cape is shredded. He's got holes in his suit. It's just, ah, oh, I love it. I just, I'm just melting all over the place here. But he, I have he, to give a shout out though to Kevin Coley for the artwork um, on the Emperor. I have never been so terrified of looking at the Emperor. It, he is horrifying in this issue, in the holographic. Just the just the lines on the face, the detail on the on the nose and the mouth, the eyes. He's terrifying. And I love yeah, it. Yeah, you know what? I th- I think he got a lot of practice on doing this kind of thing in, oh boy, the, 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 sort of the late 600s and uh, of Amazing Spider-Man. And I, yeah, in that area, right where you know, Marvel was really pumping the tires for issue 700. And it was, mm-hmm. a, it was one last arc between Doc Ock and Spidey. Oh, okay. And, and Doc Ock, if, if people aren't following, uh, He's not the the bowl cut wearing four eyes with, uh, you know, the, the a green jumpsuit, green and yellow jumpsuit, like that. Doc Ock is long gone, and he's now like this. He's only, he's very much like Vader in a sense. Where he's in this this suit that keeps him alive, uh, but his face looks a lot like what we see here of Palpatine. Mm. Minus a little bit of hardware that Doc Ock was also wearing. Right, right. A very creepy look. But yeah, like you said, Palpatine looks ghastly. It's almost like reptilian looking. If you see it, like on the, uh, even on the first page, you know, you see like the bigger shot of him um, under the hood. It's, it's, it's cool. A lot of, a lot of good imagery there. Yeah, no, he did. He did. Uh, the art through in this series, this whole arc has, has, been really really good there's been a couple moments uh some some bad stormtroopers and some lazy work on vader's helmet early on but by and large i've been super pleased with the work it's a comic book it should look like a comic book and it does it's the art is bold in this the colors pop everywhere i'm just i'm stunned by this anyway so uh palpatine's got vader's next assignment lined up and it's to go back to Mustafar. So he's he's probably not been gone from Mustafar from very long after getting hacked to bits by Obi-Wan and then burned to a crisp. But Palpatine sends him back. Which, yeah, I, I, I try to stay spoiler-free on these comics until they actually get delivered to me. And I only got mine today. So I, I had to, I kind of had to stay spoiler-free on this for a while. Right, right. I had no idea he was going back to, to Mustafar. I was like, oh my god, already. My mind started racing. Are, are, are we getting the Rogue One castle already? Hold your horses, Kyle. We're not there yet. But uh, just to see him back on Mustafar so soon uh, with the idea of uh, corrupting Master Infile's uh, kyber crystal, his, the stolen kyber crystal. He's got, now he's got to corrupt it. He's got to do that thing that we read about in the, the Ahsoka novel. Is that where we first read about bleeding the crystal? Yeah. Yeah, so now we, we we get to see Vader do that, and it's not an, an easy process. It seems to be much easier to heal a crystal than it is to break a crystal's will, mm. which of course Vader does. But in the in the interim, while he's actually trying to break it, I I, I think we see a sequence where maybe the crystal is trying to persuade Vader to turn back to the light. So he has a couple right. of. A couple of visions of himself fighting Palpatine and killing him. And then a, a, mm-hmm. another vision of uh, encountering Obi-Wan on this peaceful planet out there. And uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's just a really great scene where Vader kind of in this vision with Obi-Wan, uh, 
you know, drops to his knees, takes off his helmet, and is just begging Obi-Wan for help. It's interesting because it's a really cool juxtaposition um, with Luke uh, with Yoda. And when Luke has to go into the cave in Empire, and it's kind of the dark side coming to him, where this is Vader, it's the light side coming to him. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just a, a really cool parallel. Um, which actually didn't even occur to me until we, <laughs> until you kind of were going into it in depth. No, actually, that that yeah, nice call. I like that. But again, the art in this sequence, amazing to see. One one of the things about Revenge of the Sith is is Palpatine fighting and the way he kind of launches himself out of the chair and does that like fully horizontal spin. Mm-hmm. You know, we get to see the comic book version of that here. It's it's, it's just terrific work. And just like a callback, because the colors in general, um, once the vision is, is is done and he's finally trying to make it bleed, just the, the popping of the reds and the blacks, um, there's that kind of like, it's, it's like a half splash page. It's Vader reaching out to the stone, to the Kyber crystal, and then you kind of get all those quarter panels below it. Yeah. Um, again, that's like another one I would love to frame. <laughs> uh, really good work. Really good. Oh. Super, super work. Um, but something we kind of missed bef- prior to the Force Vision here, um, where it's uh, Palpatine tells Vader to go to where the Force is calling to him, or where the Dark Side is calling to him, and he enters this cave with like writings on the wall. Um, yeah. So, what is your what are your thoughts on that? Well, obviously, there's a lot more going on on, on Mustafar than than we would maybe realized before. I, I, well, I think Rogue One kind of let that cat out of the bag. Mm-hmm. You know, seeing uh, Vader's, Vader's castle there and learning that well, it's it's built upon some sort of Sith. Was it, is it was Vader's castle built upon a Sith temple or something like that? Was that stated in Rogue One? I'm kind of... Uh, no, I think it was in the art of Rogue One book. There, there's something oh, to... okay. There's something to Mustafar. Like, it's it's yeah. a really a uh, potent place uh with the dark side and so and again which which adds another layer to palpatine's plan all along to have vader go take out the separatist leader on mustafar like it, vader had no chance he was being just manipulated every step of the way like it, his free will was basically taken away from him mm-hmm. but yeah to see the, these glowing writings on this cave wall uh, on Mustafar. It's it's kind of re- reminiscent of Rebels a little bit when they enter that, that Sith temple on Malachor. That's right. I got to yeah. keep my M, M worlds straight here. <laughs> but yeah, it's sort, sort of like that. So uh, we're, we're delving a little bit into the lore, into the lore. And I, I, I hope, oh my goodness, I hope that we get to f- spend some time on Mustafar learning about what's here. What does what does this planet really mean to uh, the, the Sith religion? Right. I I would hope it would happen in this issue, not this issue, this um this book, this series, you know, volume two. Yeah, it's, yeah. Don't tease us. <laughs> it has to. We you have brought to us to this there. point. Now give it to us. Right. Right. Yeah. There, there, there's a great splash page. Uh. Right after the first time Vader tries to break the crystal and, and it resists him and it, it throws him back and it shatters one of his lenses and it, you know, leaving Vader even further broken. Early on, Palpatine had told him to fe- like feed the crystal your pain, use Mustafar's dark side energy to just channel it all into the crystal, make it understand your pain. And we get this nice uh, sequential uh, bit of art here with we see Padawan Anakin carrying his dead mother. Uh, he, he has a, a vision of Padme. Just all, all the events in his life that have caused him great pain. All the things that he hates. There's a, there's a, a shot of Palpatine in there too. Mm-hmm. Which I think is telling. He, he must... He hates Palpatine. Hates him too. He must obey him, but he hates him. But isn't that true though with the, the dichotomy of the the Master and the Apprentice? The the um, 
the the rule of two. It's just like there's always the apprentice always tries to take out the master. Am I am I wrong on that? Or is that, yeah, is that no, like that's a cycle what they that do. Repeat? Yeah, so. that's how these guys work. That's common. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, well, that that crystal finally breaks. Anakin Vader has has broken the crystal's will, and he he returns to Coruscant, and this is where you see him kind of walk through the Emperor's uh, office, the same one from Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. And this is what I was, I was talking about off the top here, where he's got the robotic leg, uh, the two repaired arms, the broken helmet, the sh- the shredded cape, uh, b- like blaster holes in his in his torso. It's it's perfect, and Tarkin's in it, as if he's going to protect the Emperor. Nice try, mm-hmm. Will Will Huff. <laughs> but that last panel is Vader igniting uh, in Fillet's lightsaber, and it and it comes out red. So there we go. Vader now has that signature red lightsaber of his. It's not the same. It's not the right hilt, but at least the crystal's red now. So we are off and running. I can only assume that next issue will take a bit of a jump through time with a Vader with a new suit. And uh, I think this is where the, the Inquisitors are going to make their entrance. Yeah, the, the preview for next issue, it's uh, the Grand Inquisitor with a spinning lightsaber. Yep. Well, and again, at his feet, a broken Vader helmet. <laughs> so maybe this is where, maybe we're not done. Maybe this is... We're not done toughening up Vader yet. Maybe the Emperor is going to make Vader fight the Grand Inquisitor. Maybe it's going to be another tough fight. Right. I mean, I imagine this... I mean, I can't imagine it's all of Volume 2, but a lot of this is putting Vader through the uh, through these different tests. You know, he's trying to get him stronger in the end. So I imagine this will be a running theme of trying to break down Vader. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah, like treat him cruelly, make him do things that, well, he, whether he wants to do them or not, you're going to do them. You're going to cut people up, you're going to go chase down remaining Jedi. And all along, Palpatine's making him do these things that are probably BS. He probably doesn't have to go do them. If, he, if, if you know, it's, it's, it's all an effort to crush Vader's spirit and make him completely subservient. But I highly recommend this this entire arc. This whole volume so far has been off the charts good. So uh, I'm, I'm sure anybody listening to this who reads comics is already reading this. No brainer. But if you don't read the comics, if if it's something you're thinking about, and you know you listen to podcasts like this to see whether or not you might get into it, take a chance on this one. This is the book. Uh, once it comes out in, in trade. You definitely want to pick up this book. It's it's everything about it is is top notch. Uh, I I couldn't recommend this more. Definitely do it. Well, there we go. It's time time to wind things down. Yeah. Any plans for the weekend? Plans, plans. Um, more wedding planning. Oh, we're going to a show tomorrow night. One of our podcasts is doing a live taped recording. So that we listen to the, um, so we're gonna go listen to those guys record it. Cool. I think it's somewhere in Brooklyn. Should be very, fun. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. What about you? Ah, uh, I've got a actually my my a buddy of mine is is getting a twenty twenty five of us together. We're gonna go play softball for the afternoon. Have some beers. Get a barbecue going, and that will be that'll be a ton of fun. I haven't done that yeah. in a long, long time. Sounds awesome. And I will also be putting together episode 92 of the podcast. Wow, we'll be talking about close, all kinds of stuff. Coming close to 100 there. It's creeping up on us. It's coming. We, we figured it out. It's November 7th is our 100th episode, if, if all goes to plan. So that's it, everybody. That is Journals of the Willing for this week. Uh, we'll be back again at some point in the near future to go through another pile of comics that we've plowed through and maybe maybe we'll have more to say on the novels as well by that point uh so steve where can people connect with you on twitter uh i am on twitter at joango fett g-i-o-a-n-g-o fett awesome so if you, if you haven't followed steve yet go give him a follow it's always good to kind of tighten up this web at the star wars commonwealth so 
Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm at Tumbling Saber, but you powerful friends know that. Uh, everybody else out there, Tumbling Saber on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Come say hi. Don't be shy. And we'll see you all, everybody, in episode 92. I, I really don't know if it's 92. I think it is. <laughs> I've been saying 92 all night. I'm sticking with it. <clears throat> so that's it, everybody. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to Journals of the Willing from the Tumbling Saber team, a member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Learn more about the network and its members at StarWarsCommonwealth.com.